Montox New York here. Because pesticides are in our fruits, our vegetables, herbs, and spices, I couldn't help but wonder, are pesticides in my essential oils and the products that I love that use essential oils as an ingredient? And then I had this horrifying thought. By definition, essential oils are highly concentrated extracts of plants. So, could there be highly concentrated pesticides in my essential oils? The shocking answer to that question has forever changed how I buy and use essential oils. So, if you don't want to be breathing concentrated pesticides, massaging them into your skin, or even worse, ingesting them, you need to see this short video. And don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't sell essential oils, but I have been using them for over 30 years. So, are there pesticides in essential oils or not? The answer is yes, there are. And no, there aren't. It depends. And what I suspected turned out to be true. Among other sources, I found my answers in this study from 2013 and from this study from just last year. Basically, some essential oils are loaded up with toxic pesticides, while, on the other hand, some are pesticide-free. It mostly depends on how the oil is made. Most are made using steam distillation which is exactly the way that I remove chemicals like pesticides from my drinking water. So it makes sense that those oils would be free of pesticides. But some oils are made by cold press extraction, which is a fancy way of saying that the oil is squeezed out. And this method not only won't remove toxins and pesticides, but can concentrate them. And this is the way almost all citrus oil is made. This is important because citrus oils are some of the most popular oils and citrus is grown using lots of pesticides. Here's what I do and here's what you need to know. First thing I do is I'll pay a little more to get organic citrus oils. But, of course, there's an exception to that rule, which I'll explain shortly. But if you look at this chart, which uses orange oil as an example, you can see that a non-organic oil contains an average of 17 pesticides, whereas an organic oil contains an average of 4 pesticides, and they're at much, much, much lower levels. When considering citrus oils, I want you to know and understand a few things. Number one, bergamot, which is a very popular oil, is a citrus fruit. And I pay the extra money for the organic version. Two, lime oil. For some reason that I don't understand, the lime oils are often steam distilled. The only citrus I've encountered that is steam distilled. This example shows why it's important to buy oils from companies that actually tell you how the oils are made. And being steam distilled, I don't buy lime oil organic because, as I said before, steam distillation is a very effective way of removing pesticides and other chemicals that are too heavy to be carried up in the steam. Number three. You may have noticed that many of the essential oil companies are now coming out with organic versions of their oils. And some of the companies are organic all the way. If you can afford it, you could just buy oils from those companies. But I'm on a tight budget and sometimes the organic label means very little as far as pesticides. So, do I care if my rosemary oil is organic or not? No, I don't, because rosemary is usually grown without pesticides, being that rosemary itself is a pesticide and an insect repellent. Plus, in every example 
I've looked at, it's always steam distilled. So I'm comfortable buying really inexpensive rosemary oil as long as it's from a company that I trust. And in this case, it doesn't even say whether this one is steam distilled, but I'd bet you anything that it is. Another reason that I'm not loyal to any specific brand is because of the oil blends. By blend, I mean, of course, when the company puts together a synergistic collection of essential oils to achieve a specific therapeutic goal, like, for example, fighting germs or helping you sleep. And my favorite synergy blends happen to come from various different companies. Now, a problem arises when a synergy blend includes a citrus, and many of them do. This one has mandarin, definitely a citrus fruit, and it's definitely not organic in this blend. Another synergy blend is this Nature Shield by Now Foods, and it's one that we use a lot of, and lucky for me, now was wise enough to put organic orange and lemon oil in this blend. But for some reason, they use their non-organic citrus oils in their other blends. Another thing to consider is household products that contain citrus oils, like these air fresheners, for example. I used to think these were just the best, being that they're non-aerosol, and they have no other ingredient other than citrus oils. But the oils are not organic, and it's safe to assume that they are loaded up with pesticides. I don't use them anymore. It's a simple enough thing to make your own air freshener using a spray bottle, preferably not a plastic one, because acidy oils like citrus might leach out the toxins from the plastic. Anyway, my point is that you can easily make your own air freshener with a spray bottle and your organic citrus oils. If you have non-organic orange oil and lemon oil and you don't want to throw it out, I have a use for it that I'll share with you at the end of this video. So thanks for watching my video. And if you're concerned about pesticides, I suggest you watch my video, which shows you the best way to remove pesticides from your fresh fruit and veggies, as reported in Consumer Reports and Popular Science, and as hacked by me to make it even better. It's called a detox and disinfect bath for your fruits and veggies. Before I forget, this is what I did with my non-organic orange oil and lemon oil after realizing that they are loaded up pretty bad with pesticides. I kept them, but not to use for aromatherapy or do-it-yourself air fresheners or do-it-yourself cleaners, but to use as gunk removers. You know, when you have the residue adhesive from a label stuck on something and it just doesn't want to come off, you can use lemon oil or orange oil. But being that it's uh, somewhat toxic, I, of course, take care not to handle it and touch it a lot and uh, to do it in a ventilated space, just like I would if I were using Goo Gone or one of the commercial citrus adhesive removers. Please feel free to leave your comments below so that we can learn from each other. And remember to subscribe to Nontox New York so you can find your way back. And if you press the bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And I've got a lot more coming. Take care.